Hello guys, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different today and that is how I remember lots of songs in a short space of time. So obviously I know everyone's brain is wired differently, this might not work for you or maybe one or two things might work for you but not the whole thing but I wanted to talk about this and put it out there just in case it is helpful to anyone because this is my personal experience on the way my brain processes things in the quickest way and how I can kind of get it to latch on to certain things to make it remember more quickly if I'm on limited time. So let's say you've got a Dep gig coming up and it's covers so you know every song, you've heard every song that you've been asked to learn, you've got maybe three days to learn 30 covers. So assuming you already know what these songs sound like, uh, you can skip a couple of the things that I say in this video, but that's not always the case because sometimes obviously you'll get asked to learn an entire set of songs that you've never heard before. So if you're depping for an, for an originals band and you've literally never heard any of their stuff before, uh, it can be a little bit more tricky because you've got a few more obstacles to face along the way. So this is how in both scenarios I do my best to remember all of them as quickly as possible and as fail safely as possible. So number one thing I would say my brain does is I'll pick out what shapes are in the song. So the way I see the fretboard when I'm learning songs is I'll view the bass line as shapes. So for example, Californication to me, I can't play it too much because of copyright, but my ring is that's a rectangle and then a triangle. So you have the rectangle here. So that's the rectangle and then the triangle is. So I then know, okay, Californication, let's say I just learnt a song and I couldn't 100% remember how it's played but I need something to recall that information and go, uh, what was it again? And kind of jog my memory. So I'll go, oh it's, it's the Rectangle Triangle song and then my brain can kind of go, oh I know, yeah it's this. So it's kind of about association so I'll pick out uh, either, depending on how many parts there are to the bass line, the shapes that stick out to me the most. So in this section, this is a, it's the bass line that has like a rectangle and a triangle. And then in the other section, it's a long rectangle up the neck. Hopefully this is making some kind of sense. It's basically about finding extremely simple ways to look at something that is, that can be very complex and to jog your memory in the quickest way possible and to take in as much information as possible and compact it into something that is very simple and easy to recall. So there's the sh memorizing shapes is probably the number one thing that I do whether I already have heard the song or not. So like, obviously if you know the song you've got an idea of what it sounds like but you don't necessarily remember visually what it looks like to play so that can be really helpful even if you already have heard the song. Um, but secondary to that, um, if you don't know the songs, what I found helps is to write down the main aspects of the songs, so, or at least make a mental note, but if you have a set list that you can write them down on, then I'll do that just as a fail safe. So if you're anything like me, sometimes the names of songs, you struggle to match them up to the sound of the song. So let's say there's a song that starts with bass or you can't remember if the song starts with bass or drums etc or if everyone all comes in together because you can't instantly look at the name of the song, song and go oh that song sounds like this because if you're if you've only just heard the song and you've just tried to learn it and had to memorize it the song doesn't always go in. So what I do in that case is again same kind of concept, um, obviously I'll rem remember the shapes, but also I'll do something like, I'll write down the main points of the song, so starts with bass, or starts with drums, drum fill then bass comes in, or entire band starts together, and then to also kind of 
give myself the best start, I'll not only do that, but I'll also write down kind of what does the song make me think of. So, for example, certain song, I'll write it down as like the carnival song, the song that sounds like a carnival. And then my brain can kind of go, oh yeah, I, I kind of semi remember what that song sounds like now. Oh, it's that one that sounds like this. So that name equals that song. It's the carnival song. <laughs> Or whatever your brain associates it with, just go with it. It doesn't matter how relevant it is to the song, as long as you remember it and it means the correct thing to you. That is what the important thing is. Um, and then the other thing I'll do is, of course, sometimes I'll write down the ending. So everyone ends on uh, an abrupt stop, for example. Obviously, I know... Um, in a lot of live situations, there's a lot of improv and stuff that can go on, but if you're in a situation where they want it exactly as the record that they've sent you, then it really helps to kind of write these little things down so that on the off chance you don't remember, you know you've either made a note of it or you've written it down somewhere. And quickly, before you uh, start the song, you can go, oh, it's that song, the ending is this, the beginning is this, and it's the song that sounds like this. So you can kind of then start to, even before the gig, you can start to then match the song names to the song sounds. So like the carnival song, oh, it's the song that sounds like this. And the more you kind of reiterate that in the run up to the gig and even just before you play the song at the gig, I just found it really helped me to kind of basically make a mental map of many many songs without having to spend loads of time learning them if I don't have that much time. Um, so it's basically kind of, I don't want to say shortcutting because it's still a lot of effort and it requires you to still think a hell of a lot, but once you've done the initial thinking on it and the initial learning you can then pinpoint the bits that stick out to you that jog your memory for the in-between bits if that makes any sense. Um, so those I would say are the main two things I would do. The other thing I'll write down sometimes, like you can add extra information such as uh, the galloping bass line that starts on the fifth fret. So you've initially, like straight off the bat, you've got, oh yeah, it's the song that starts here. And then your brain kind of goes, oh, that song starts there, but then it goes here and here and here. And it kind of jogs your memory. So Obviously muscle memory is another massive thing, go through the songs as much as you can, but I know there are certain other pitfalls, like not being able to recall what the song sounds like before the band has started playing it, that can sometimes uh, be in danger of tripping you up, so it just helps to have these extra things. If, uh, on top of muscle memory, or if you don't have time to get it fully in your muscle memory, then it just helps to have little fail-safe things where it's like, okay, I can draw back, that's that, this is this, it uses these shapes, this name equals this song, stuff like that. Um, but I found that helps in general with anything, so if I'm learning a song, it just kind of breaks it, it simplifies it to my brain, so I can learn songs fairly quickly even if I'm not under a time constraint. It, in ge just as a general tool overall I found it really helpful so not just in stressful situations but if I just sit down I want to learn a song I can then I could probably play a song depending on how complex obviously there's a limit with my brain like I couldn't sit down and learn YYZ all the way through and remember it perfectly but I could get pretty damn close by using what these things that work for my brain um, but yeah, so hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Um, other things I've also put as notes is like song with a disco breakdown. So make any notes of stuff. If the song goes off on a bit of a different tangent that you might be likely to forget it actually does. Like if it's a bit unusual, you wouldn't expect it to come up in the song. You uh, write down those points as well or make a mental note of them. Like say you're in a metal song but it goes into a disco breakdown. R make sure you make a mental note or write down song that goes into a disco breakdown. And that again will help you recall things much quicker, but also 
it's amazing how, at least for me, it's not just a case of, oh, I can't remember that, so I need the notes in order to recall it. It's just the act of making these notes actually makes me remember the song more properly anyway. So we, and then I quite often find that by the time I get to the gig, I don't even need what I've written down or that I've, what I've made a mental note on because it's become solidified in my brain. But by breaking stuff down, in, like if you break a riff down into a shape, you've then got less, you're not trying to remember individual notes, you're remembering a shape. So you've then cut down on how much information your brain is trying to remember individually. So Californication isn't this note, then this note, then this note, then this trill, then this note, then this note, and then this note. It's, it's the rectangle and then the triangle. And that is so much quicker for me to recall and I found that, that in a lot of cases really works. Um, but if you're struggling to visualise shapes, you can also try and pick out try and pick out what for you sticks out to you within the bass line. So not necessarily a shape. Uh, as an example, hysteria to me is the bass line that uses lots of half steps. Obviously I've I, that bass line is well and truly in my brain anyway now but when I was first learning it it's it's the song that uses lots of half steps and again that's just another kind of thing to pinpoint that helps your brain go ah it's that without having to go this note this note this note this note this note like because that's a lot of information to your brain to remember if you're learning like 30 plus songs in a couple of days you just it makes things a lot harder for yourself than if you can find a way to compact that information. So in summary, uh, basically if you're learning lots of songs or learning any bass line, pick out, the, no, try and notice things that stick out to you that aren't just individual notes. Unless your brain works that way, in which case that is great and that's amazing, carry on. But if you're able to see certain shapes or compact things in another way like oh it's a song that uses half steps um make as many notes of that mentally as you can and associate the songs with that if you don't know the songs prior to having to learn them so if they're originals you've never heard before and you're struggling to remember song names with song sounds then make a note of it's the song that sounds like a carnival or it's the song that sounds like a disco, etc. Um, obviously, if you're playing within a disco band, that's not going to be very helpful. So try and look for things that stick out. So um, the disco song that sounds like a carnival. Um, basically, anything, whatever your brain associates it with, write that down. And I found that it helps me to remember how the song sounds before I even start playing it. Um, make a note of what the song starts with. So does it start with bass? Does everyone come in? Does it start with a drum fill, etc.? Um, what kind of rhythm does it come in on? So if everyone comes in at the same time and you can't recall what the song sounds like, make a note of, oh, it's a galloping rhythm or it's the song in this time signature, for example. And it just kind of gives you a head start of what to play before you can actually hear what you're meant to play on the off chance you can't recall it. Um, and yeah, so shapes, uh, making notes of things that stick out to you in the song, um, making notes of how things start and also how they end and any sections in the middle of songs. So does a song have a particular breakdown that sticks out to you? Like, does it go into a disco breakdown? Um, it's basically mapping out the song in the simplest way but with the most information possible without your brain having to recall too many things all at once. You're, so you're able to recall a lot of information by recalling one thing, if that makes any sense. Um, and yeah, so that's basically how I found that my brain works best when I'm trying to learn loads and loads of songs in a very short amount of time, whether I know them or I don't already know what they sound like. Um, hopefully this has been somewhat helpful and if there's any other questions you have I'm more than happy to answer them um, related to this or totally unrelated to this. 
or any other videos like this you would like to see, then give me a shout and I'll do my best. Uh, yeah. Again, if this doesn't work for you, that is not a fault on your part. It's just that your brain just doesn't work in the same way. Everyone's different and we need all different kinds of brains. So don't feel disheartened if this made totally no sense to you whatsoever and it doesn't work at all. But if it does, that's amazing. And that's why I wanted to put this out there just in case anyone's like me and it does work for you. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, um, I do have a Patreon, which I'll put a link for in the description if you'd like to support the channel. It really does mean the world and it helps more than I can express. Um, I've also got a band camp uh, with some songs on it. So certain jams that are on here as well will be on my band camp. And if they're not, you can always ask me and I'll put them up there for you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day or evening or night or morning.